Hello and welcome to this next video in our series on trade theories. In this video we're going to be looking at the heckscher olin theory and then following on with the Leontief paradox. Alright then, let's get started. You'll remember from previous videos and from maybe your previous readings that David Ricardo thought of the idea of comparative advantage and comparative advantage comes from differences in efficiency of production. And therefore Ricardo claimed that comparative advantage explained two things. One, why trade was beneficial to two parties even if one party had absolute advantage in all production. And B, it explained the patterns of trade between countries. Countries with a comparative advantage in that product would export to the other country. Now, the Heckscher and Olin theory still believes that free trade w is beneficial to everyone, but explains the benefits and the patterns of trade in a different way. It looks at the factors of production, land, labour and capital. Let's have a look at two fictional countries to explain it. Okay, we have country A, a quite small country has a lot of land, quite a lot of capital, and not much labour. Country B, well these things are a bit more evenly divided up, but it has more labour than the other two factors. So 40% or so labour, compared with 23 and 35% land. Notice that B is much bigger, and that although land is only 35% of its factors production. It still has much more land than country A, even though in country A land makes up 60% of the factors of production. So what did Heckscher and Olin say about this? So they posited the idea that countries with a relative abundance of a particular factor of production would export products that used those factors, used that factor, to produce goods. So, looking at these, A here has 60% of its factors of production is land, whereas B it's only 35%. So they predicted that country A would export products using land to country B. Country A also has relative abundance of capital, 30% of its factors as opposed to 23% of its factors for country B. So products that required a lot of capital input to make them would be exported from country A to country B. And for country B, well country B has a lot of labour. 42% of its factor production is labour. So we would use labour as a factor of production to export to country A. And this makes sense. If you have a lot of something, it's going to be cheaper, relatively. So a lot of labour means that labour is relatively cheap, so therefore you would have an advantage in products that use labour. And likewise for country A. They have a lot of land relative to the other factors, therefore because it is abundant and plentiful, it's probably going to be cheaper than the other things. And so therefore, they will be able to use this factor as an advantage for production and export. And this makes total sense. If you have a lot of something, it will be cheaper, and therefore you're probably more likely to be able to use it as an advantage. And this is very appealing to economists. And for a long time, the heckscher olin theory was accepted as a way of explaining patterns of global trade. But then, in the 1950s, came the work of Vasily Leontief. He had a look at American trade and American imports and exports, and he had expected to find that America would export more goods that were capital-intensive that it imported from other countries. However, his data showed the opposite. In fact, America was importing more capital-intensive goods than it was exporting capital-intensive goods, and hence the paradox. And we don't really understand why this is. 
although recent work is giving us some clues. It could be the nature of the labour that explains America's exports of more labour-intensive goods. Think of software, for example. This is highly skilled labour that America has a plentiful supply of, especially in Silicon Valley and uh, other parts of the states as well, maybe Texas and the, um, the northeast around Boston and New York area. And they're producing perhaps m most of the world's innovative software. And they're exporting that to all of us. So perhaps we can bring comparative advantage back into the equation. Maybe differences in technology can have an effect on these factors of production. So if we're using technology with our labour, our labour becomes more efficient. And so even though America may have more capital and labour may be relatively less abundant than land and capital, for example, the effect of high technology increases the productivity of the labour so much that it makes up for this relative lack of abundance. Once we've controlled for technology um, in our statistics and our data, we do see that countries do indeed tend to export products that rely on locally abundant factors of production and import products that are relatively scarce locally. So the heckscher olin theory isn't dead yet. Relative abundance of factors of production still does seem to have some way of explaining the patterns of trade across the world. Okay, and in the next video we will have a look at new trade theory.